Romano vengo dall'università eh, di Padova, innanzitutto volevo ringraziare Piero come ogni anno per questa iniziativa e per avermi eh, qui con voi. Quanti pazienti ci sono in sala familiare di pazienti? Okay. Allora cercherò di fare come ha eh, fatto Paolo Bernardi, eh, di passare, di alternarmi tra l'inglese e l'italiano, peraltro avevo visto che sul programma mi era stata concessa erroneamente un'ora di tempo, quindi la mia presentazione è stata calibrata su un'ora di tempo e rimarremo insieme ancora per molto. Eh, uh, our English uh, friends I'll try to do like Paolo. I'll be switching back and forth between English and Italian, and I'm not sure whether I would be as capable as he is. He actually did my PhD with Paolo, so he's my master. I'll, uh, what I'll try to convey you today uh, is uh, uh, what we are working on in, uh, in my lab uh, with an eye on uh, potential new treatments for mitochondrial uh, disease. And um, I, don't, I don't want to be uh, any long on this, but uh, I'm sure that you're aware of the model of my structure that comes from um, textbooks, and uh, this is an original drawing from the 50s from George Palad, which illustrates the model that has been uh, set for, for put forward for many, many years and did the work of uh, uh, Terry Clay and Carmen Manella revolutionized our view of how they look like. And this is an electron tomography, uh, which is like a CT scan of a mitochondria that looks like a, a, a different picture. Okay? And I think that, uh, let's see, again, again. I think that you can appreciate with me the fact that mitochondria uh, have uh, different compartments. Uh, they are separated uh, by this red structure, which is the other mitochondria memory, uh, from the extra, extra mitochondrial space, uh, how are the mitochondria like to call the cell. Um, and then they have an inner boundary membrane, which is here depicted in uh, the edge, and these pleomorphic structures, which look like bags that are the mitochondrial crystal, that are connected <coughs> to the intermembrane space by this uh, narrow tubular crystal junction that constitutes a diffusion barrier for small molecules, and as well as for one of the key components of the electron transport chain, that is cytochrome C, that has, uh, as you know, a day job in transferring electrons complexes three and four, but also has a nice job in uh, cell death, uh, in activating the species, uh, which uh, will then accomplish the process of apoptosis and the means uh, our dying uh, cells. So, uh, uh, nostri amici pazienti, noi ci occupiamo di come i mitocondri, uh, come, di come sono fatti i mitocondri. E io ho mostrato una piccola carrellata di del passato uh, con uh, una struttura che è rimasta così nei libri di testo per, per tanti anni eh, e con la visione attuale di come sono fatti i mitocondri uh, al loro interno. Perché è importante studiarlo? È importante studiarlo perché esistono uh, delle conseguenze funzionali a come i mitocondri sono fatti eh, e infatti è una delle cose eh, di cui ci occupiamo nel mio laboratorio proprio quello di capire come eh, la relazione tra struttura e funzione dei mitocondri abbia un impatto eh, sulla funzionalità dell'organello, sulla funzionalità della cellula e alla fine sulle malattie. So, what we do in my lab is to uh, look at uh, three major aspects. One is uh, how uh, mitochondria structure and ultrastructure impacts, especially on the release of cytochrome C, how might you want to connect to other organelles inside the cell, and uh, ultimately we exploit uh, the field of mitochondrial dynamics that contributed to found uh, to understand what's the function of mitochondrial complex cell uh, physiology. Uh, the focus of my talk today is uh, basically going to be a protein which is called uh, OPA1. You have heard from Elena uh, about this protein. This is a GTP, so the inner mitochondrial membrane, uh, which is targeted there by mitochondrial targeting sequence and has a hydrophobic stretch that inserts it into the inner mitochondrial membrane. Uh, 
then it has all the signature domains of a dynamic range of protein in particular. It has a GTP domain followed by middle domain and so then I'm going to call it a This is a multifunctional protein. Uh, as uh, you know, it's mutated in autosomal dominant of the cutoffy that as you heard from Massimo is a, the leading cause of uh, genetic uh, blindness, of genetic uh, optic neuropathy. Uh, and um, uh, this protein uh, has, we understood over the years, a number of uh, uh, functions uh, in uh, not only mitochondrial fusion, as you heard from Elena, but also in the control of uh, uh, doses by keeping in check uh, the size of these uh, crystal junctions that are should be formed uh, by forming. Uh, Multimeric complexes that act like staples at the crystal junctions. Um, in more recent years, we also found a role uh, for OPA1 in controlling uh, mitochondrial metabolism, in particular, uh, it favors the assembly of the respiratory chain super complexes, which are structures that are taught uh, to stabilize individual complexes and to streamline mitochondrial. Oggi parliamo di una proteina che si chiama OPA1 che è mutata in una malattia uh, mitocondriale che causa cecità che si chiama uh, uh, atrofia ottica autosomica dominante eh, e che eh, ha molte funzioni all'interno dei mitocondri, non soltanto come ha spiegato la professoressa Lugardi serve per farli fondere ma anche serve per mantenere la forma interna dei mitocondri in particolare per mantenere sotto controllo quella struttura sulla quale il filmino stava andando uh, a zoomare, si chiama uh, giunzione tubolare stretta delle criste, scusate il termine tecnico, uh, ma anche ha dei ruoli specifici nel mantenimento della respirazione mitocondriale, in particolare nel miglioramento dell'efficienza della respirazione mitocondriale, favorendo uh, delle reazioni super assemblaggio dei contesti della catena respiratoria all'interno di tutti. Uh, indeed, uh, what uh, uh, we were founded uh, for by Peloton uh, last year uh, was a continuation of the very successful program uh, project led by Massimo Zeliani uh, until he moved uh, to the MRC, uh, <coughs> which uh, aims at uh, treating uh, CRIST if you wish to treat uh, mitochondrial diseases. I'm coordinating uh, this, uh, this project only because there was no, no other person available, really, because I have some uh, fantastic colleagues uh, on board uh, who are probably much better suited than me in this uh, project. And uh, uh, indeed, uh, we have a uh, uh, stellar group of uh, people from uh, Padova. We have uh, Paolo Bernardi and Serino Rizzuto who are uh, looking at the role of the Christ in the permeability transition for opening and uh, uh, of the permeability transition for opening on the ultrastructural determinant of the crystal and of course of calcium in uh, the process. Uh, our colleague uh, Leonardo Saldiati is looking at the relationship between uh, coenzyme Q biosynthesis and coenzyme Q um, administration and crystal ultrastructure. Uh, Valerio Carelli is looking at the uh, level uh, of, of the cathode uh, Christian Arroyes is not in Padova, but we consider Bologna to be a colony of Padova, so we decided to have him on board, uh, nevertheless. Uh, and uh, what, uh, on the other hand, I, I do is to manipulate Christian uh, uh, from a genetic point of view, and you can see what happens. Our uh, scientific idea is that uh, when you have a primary oxygen deficiency, this results in a crystal alteration that can uh, somehow give rise for calcium overload, the crest alteration can also give rise for loss uh, production, uh, can alter uh, coenzyme to biosynthesis. All these processes are interrelated uh, and they result in uh, DDP opening and DDP opening can also cause crest alteration and so on and so forth. And you see these arrows, they're going back and forth. But there is one thing that uh, we believe is downstream of uh, for sufficiency that uh, might be targeted pharmacologically in this crystal alteration. And at the end, you get the phenotype of the devastating mitochondrial diseases that you're very 
maggio famiglia, no? Uh, come sapete, forse sapete, siamo finanziati dal uh, Telephone grazie a una uh, continuazione del program project che è stato uh, in maniera così uh, perfetta, coordinato da Massimo Zeviani fino a che non è diventato il direttore dell'unità in Marsi di Cambridge uh, e la nostra idea è quella di sfruttare le modificazioni ultrastrutturali, quindi le modificazioni interne dei mitocondri come un nuovo bersaglio terapeutico per interrompere quella catena di eventi che dalla mutazione porta fino alla malattia. Uh, today what I will do I will uh, show you uh, some data uh, which Massimo already referred uh, uh, that uh, pertain to uh, my part of, the, uh, the, of this uh, multicentric grant is to investigate uh, uh, whether genetic correction of crystal shape has <laughs> any uh, role in ameliorating phenotypes of microbial disease. So what we did was to generate a uh, number one over expressing mouse uh, by a specific uh, gene targeting approach. I'm not going to go into the details, but too much of one is toxic. So we only expressed one allele in X chromosome uh, driven by a specific promoter, which is the human vitac promoter in the, the uh, specific locus, which is the HGRT locus. And this gives rise to a very mild level one over expression in multiple tissues, liver, heart, muscle, brain, cerebellum, and so on and so forth. This is what we want. Um, the mice that carry this OPA1 transgene are viable, they grow normally, they have uh, maybe a slight reduction in uh, their body weight in the black six uh, back count, but not in the SD1. Is, um, they have a normal lifespan, which is uh, uh, kind of disappointing if you invest a lot of money to generate a mouse model you want to see a phenotype. But we are persistent and uh, we decided to age these mice. And uh, what I'm showing you here is a dramatic picture that was suggested uh, to me by Massimo to show uh, of uh, uh, the, um, the heart condition of an 18 months old, which is like a you know, 75 years old person uh, in, the, in the audience. Uh, this is the heart of a wild type mouse thing for a uh, cox. And you see the fibers, they are immunoreactive for cox. And you see a lot of fibrotic uh, uh, tissue. That's the heart of a number one transgenic uh, animal. And the fibrosis is all gone. So this was really impressive and uh, prompted us to decide that and go further in the analysis of uh, the mouse and uh, especially in the analysis of a process uh, which is the muscular atrophy uh, because we think that uh, this cardiosclerosis has a component of excess autophagy going on in the heart. So what we did, uh, uh, well of course uh, this is accompanied by uh, the fact that it was a structure of metabolism. What we did was team up with uh, our friend and colleague Marco Sandri uh, University of Padova and Lee, who is an expert in autophagy, and he has a mouse model of uh, autophagy in which you basically cause uh, muscular atrophy by inducing the denervation by cutting this cutting nerve. And what you see is that the OPA1 over expression preserves the cross sectional area in the denervated muscle. This is rather uh, impressive, and the preservation. Uh, Of course, not because we are altering uh, the program of uh, autophagy. I don't want to go into the genetic analysis uh, we did for this, but basically autophagy and atrophy genetic programs that are activated upon the revision are normally the uh, uh, one transgenic animal. What is protected is the mitochondrial dysfunction. This is the assay that Paolo was uh, showing you before. You see that uh, in the fibers from the denervated one type mice, you see that the oligomycin causes a drop in my potential that's totally presented in the OPA1 transgenic. And, uh, and so, <laughs> senti, abbiamo generato un modello Polino, Topolino che eh, sovraesprime questa proteina che controlla la forma delle criste. E abbiamo visto alcune cose molto impressionanti, veramente impressionanti. Per esempio, vi ho appena fatto vedere che poca sovraespressione di questa proteina protegge dall'atrofia muscolare. Voi sapete quanto l'atrofia muscolare sia un problema fondamentale nelle malattie mitocondriali. 
Um, so really, uh, what uh, uh, what we have is that uh, uh, we have protection from uh, skeletal muscle uh, atrophy, uh, and we wanted to go on and see whether this was protected from other types of atrophies. And uh, uh, the simple answer is yes. This is protective from uh, uh, heart ischemia and perfusion, irrespective of the sex and uh, uh, the background. It's protective against uh, uh, middle cerebral artery occlusion, which is uh, uh, a model of uh, stroke. And you can see clearly here uh, the white area, which is the dead area in the white type animal. And uh, the fact that the supravital staining is, uh, is, is really staining the neoprogenic animals, and that's uh, the quantification. It's protected from massive, fast-induced uh, hepatitis, which is an in vivo model of apoptosis. You see the derangement of the liver in the wild type, the protection in uh, the neoprogenic animals. You see the reduction as measured by mana staining of apoptosis. And uh, for the aficionados of the mechanism, you see here we are staining for cytochrome C, green and for mitochondria in red in the liver, so this is in vivo staining, and you see that when we induce fast activation in the liver of a wild type animal, cytochrome C, as expected, goes out from mitochondria. When you do the same thing in the OPA1 transgenic, this is heavily protected, and cytochrome C remains in mitochondria, preventing from the buildup of uh, liver uh, dysfunction. Mechanistically, this is associated with slight mitochondrial elongation, but what's more important, it's associated with better mitochondrial activation using complex one substrates and with a reduction in the accumulation of uh, ROIS species when the cells are forced to respire on uh, mitochondrial substrates and even when actually uh, inhibit complex three pharmacologically with adenomycin. Okay. So, really, uh, this was the founding base for our next step, which is what Massimo has shown you. I will just briefly recap this for the patients and then go into the mouse experimental therapy. Uh, abbiamo visto che la sovraespressione di OPA è in grado di proteggere da una grande varietà di condizioni patologiche, soltanto la patologia muscolare, ma anche per esempio l'infarto del miocardio oppure eh, l'ictus eh, o l'epatite sperimentale eh, e questo avviene perché i mitocondri stanno meglio, i mitocondri respirano meglio, producono meno specie reattive dell'ossigeno ed è per questo che abbiamo deciso di fare quello che vi ha spiegato prima il professor Zeliani di incrociare questi topolini con dei topolini di malattia mitocondriale so we cross them with uh, massimo COX-15 knockout uh, in the skeletal muscle which are very uh, severe and did they die? This is uh, the survival curve of uh, these mice. This is the survival curve of the upper one has channing cox. And uh, so they are all alive by six months, which is when uh, the analysis uh, was uh, stopped for extra resources. And you have seen already this. The mice, not only they are alive, but they are also performing well uh, on a rotor of the assay they ran on. Uh, they run because the mitochondrial ultrastructure, uh, we believe, is corrected. This is how mitochondria look like in the COX-15 of the skeletal muscle. That's how they look like in the COX-15 of the genetic animals. Mitochondria look nice. And by looking nice, as Massimo told you, you stabilize uh, super complexes. You, by stabilizing super complexes, you restore mitochondrial respiration basically to normal levels. That's the respiration in the COX-15 knockout uh, here. And that's the respiration in the COX-15 knockout of one pathogenic. It's superimposable to that of one pathogenic. <coughs> so, quindi come avete potuto vedere in questa carrellata, non soltanto ci sono dei modelli di malattia generale che vengono corretti da questo topo, ma c'è anche un modello specifico di malattia mitocondriale che è la mancanza di un fattore importante per il complesso quarto che si chiama Fox Fittice del lavoro che abbiamo fatto insieme a Massimo Ferriani. And uh, with this I would like to uh, 
to conclude by saying that uh, if we overexpress over one, uh, this is compatible with life. And that uh, this crystal modeling pathway that we identified many, many years ago when I was a poster game, the love of time, of course, my, uh, it's crucial for the response to atrophic, apoptotic, and scanning damage in vivo and can be exploited to successfully correct a mouse model of mitochondrial disease as well. So with another mouse model with Massimo, where the protection is uh, less dramatic, but it's still there. And that's a mouse model of complex one. Uh, I presented you data that were almost single-handed generated by Tatiana Varanita with all our great hopes, sorry, colleagues, uh, and especially uh, Gabriele, Chief uh, Director Carlo Viscovi. Massimo Zeliani, thank you. Thank you.